How's it going? Hey, man, it, I'm happy. You know, the NFL draft was very kind to my Philadelphia Eagles franchise. I'm feeling good. We got a good fight coming up this week, even though it's not the fight I want. Canelo Alvarez versus uh, Jaime Munguia. I, everybody wanted to see David Benavidez, but uh, that's going to be a good fight this upcoming week. We got some great NBA playoff matchups coming up. You know, we got teams facing elimination. We got a lot going on. So we 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 got some things to talk about. But I hope your week was great because mine was, man. Hey, my week was a great one, as you know, was bouncing around in some different places with family. And as you noted, when I was watching that NFL draft unfold, I could not help but think about all of our discussions, commentaries, evaluations of Howie Roseman and how genius of a job that the Philadelphia front office does every offseason to reload. You know, and I don't want to start dropping dream team commentaries a la Vince Young, Nadi Asamoa. Oh, Lord. Oh. Back in the day, but they're starting to build another roster profile that, you know, you would expect to see like in Madden or something like that. So without further ado, we're going to jump in to topic one, which is just going to be reactions to the NFL draft. Well, it, it, outside of my beloved squad, I'm going to say, what the hell was Atlanta thinking drafting Michael Penix Jr. with the eighth pick? And you just signed a jabroni, Kirk Cousins, to a hundred and whatever million dollar contract. The fact Kirk Cousins got inked to another hundred million dollar contract, it just, I, I, I can't believe it. Like, why? Why? Why even put yourself in this predicament? And then you waste. Uh, 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 a top pick where you could have had a premium defensive player, possibly maybe a Dallas Turner. Maybe you could have got a Quinn Mitchell. Maybe you could have got the uh, brother from UCLA, Latu La from uh, UCLA, the defensive end. They could have did some things to address the defensive side of football because basically the offense is already shored up with B. Sean Robinson, Kyle Pitts. You got Drake London. You got Algier, uh, Tyler Algier. Over there and running back too, so they had a good, they got good offensive weapons, but you could address the defense and you chose to draft a quarterback that's about to turn twenty four years old and Michael Penix Jr. Come on, man, that was a that was horrible on the Atlanta Falcons part. That was a wasted draft pick, in my opinion. You know what? Um, I was in Atlanta during the draft, as it turned out, and every single moment where it was like a football fan or a football fan situation. That was the first, second, and tenth thing that they were saying, which was Penix is a player, but he's a good I, player. He's a player, but I don't know if anybody had him going top ten. And Absolutely not. That, that you see, this is what happened in NFL drafts. What's that toothbrush called? A reach, because that's exactly what the general manager did. He reached for a quarterback, hoping that. He could be the guy because this was a deep quarterback class. And some NFL teams are willing to compromise their franchise just to see if they could get that next guy. It's almost similar to when Christopher Darton tried to make O.J. Simpson put him on the glove when the case was in the bag. But you just had to see. You had to try. And one thing they say is never ask a question when there is no answer for it. If you don't already know the answer, you don't do that. Michael Penix was a good quarterback for sure at Washington. He put up large numbers, got those guys to the national championship. But the draft home number eight, when you already had premium offensive ta tackle talent that you'd have got, Olufashanu maybe from Penn State, you could have got some guys that either shore up your offensive line or defensive line, and you chose the reach for a quarterback just because this was a quarterback-rich draft. You will suffer the same fate as another team that I would say was a damn fool, the Denver Broncos, drafting Bo Nix with the 12th pick. What what the hell are y'all thinking over there? Y'all already, I get it. Y'all got the, the bum from New York, the Jets, Zach Wilson. Y'all got him under the stable, but y'all reached for Bo Nix. That was a bad draft pick. Two, draft, two bad picks by two bad franchises. Atlanta on their way up. But with that pick, Denver going to stay down for a while, man. I cannot – well said. I could not believe what I saw unfolding with Denver and the Bo Nix pick. And especially if you think about that quarterback room with Zach Wilson and Bo Nix in it, you can make a strong argument, and I think a lot of people would agree, Bo Nix is probably 
or arguably maybe a more mature leader at this point in his life than Zach Wilson. And at the same time, what does Zach Wilson have to give Bo Nix? There, there isn't a lot of learning that's going to happen between those two people in the same uh, quarterback room. So that's a head scratcher. I think that, um, like we said, Baltimore Ravens staying within their culture, picking up the cornerback, you know, as uh, a lot of people had them uh, going. I like that. It was a little chalk, you know, Chargers, Harbaugh going offensive line. There was rumors that they were going to uh, make a trade for Justin Herbert, which would have been disastrous. I don't know why you would ever even entertain that idea. And the thing that I thought was really curious, uh, worthy from Texas, fastest combine time in history, suddenly going to Patrick Mahomes, who I would have to imagine is just going to plant himself 12 yards deep behind the line of scrimmage and tell this guy to go. Rashi Rice made a damn fool of himself, though. They already had a weak uh, wide receiving core. They just enhanced it by getting Xavier Worthy. Clocking in at a 426 or 42440. That guy's blazing quick. And you add him with Pat Mahomes out there, already Travis Kelsey, the way the offense is set up. Pat Mahomes is salivating at the at the at the opportunities that will be provided for him to just throw up deep, deep bombs and just lob it up. Go get it. That's Xavier Worthy game, man. And as far as the Broncos, man, if they say iron sharp and iron, then they got two dull ass knives as their two quarterbacks. That one, that quarterback room is gonna be horrible. That's gonna be a horrible situation. Those guys are not gonna sharpen each other. They're gonna be two dull ass knives that won't get used. I promise you the Broncos will be rid of both of them in the in in three years. More so Zach Williams, Wilson too. But Bo Nix, I don't foresee him, especially in that division with the Raiders, the Chiefs, the Chargers. Ah, I don't know. Y'all going to be bottom bottom feeders for, for a couple of years, Denver Bronco fans. Like I told the Patriot fans, buckle your seatbelt. It's going to be a long ride. It's going to be a long, turbulence-filled ride. Now, let's, let's shift the, uh, attention to the Eagles who, like we said, cleaned up, in my opinion. We were talking all about uh, defensive back. They need a lot of help in that area. You, as always, correctly predicted that they would draft Jeremiah Trotter Jr., who is already predicting his hammer or axe, what is it, whatever it's called, you know, celebration, you know, to take it back to the link. So how are you feeling about the Philadelphia Eagles Hall? Let's see. This was another master class by Howie Rosen. Not only did we get the top cornerback in the draft and arguably a top 10 talent, you got the other cornerback who is rated the second best cornerback in football and Cooper DeJean, or it's Cooper DeJean, excuse me. This guy's going to be a problem because you can go nickelback, you could go outside, you can also put him in, in safety. And now you have a cornerback who, you know, six foot, 185 pounds, runs a 4-3, very handsy. He's on the ball. He plays the ball very well. He's going to be a lockdown corner for years to come. They, I like that. I like that they address their cornerback need. They address the safety need, too, because you can interchange the gene. Corner, slot, corner, nickel corner, excuse me, or safety. That's going to be a, a big help in this new 3-4 defense that we have with Vic Fangio. And I like the other draft picks, but the one I really like is Will Shipley from Clemson. He will be the backup running back to Saquon Barkley. This guy looked like Christian McCaffrey, the poor man's version, but he has those skill sets. And he looked like he's going to be a major player and, and provide Saquon a rest of breather. And he'll be a, a, a another threat to throw at Opposing defenses. I love what we did in this draft. Look, man, we 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 sky's the limit, man. I can't wait to see what this 3-4 defense looked like under Vic Fangio. We're ready to go. The Eagles will win the NFC championship. I'm gonna go say the Eagles will be 13 and 4 this year. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some things, and you're gonna hear a lot about Jalen Carter this year. Jordan Davis will step up. And I'm looking forward to see Nolan Smith now. Now that Hassan Reddick is gone, 
Nolan Smith will be asked and will have the task to see, you know, if he can provide that production. And the brother that we signed from the Jets, that guy going to be awesome too, man. The Eagles had a great free agency. We had a great draft. But I'm going to tell you, if Nick Sirianni don't get these guys to at least an NFC championship or a Super Bowl, Nick Sirianni, though, will be no excuse. They're going to drop the new on you, or they're going to drop the avalanche or whatever they dropped on Braveheart head. They're dropping that on you, brother. Your ass is gone. So get it right. This is it. You got premium talent all over the football. You have to get it right. And you got you can't be getting out coached by the likes of these other guys, man, like the San Francisco coach. When they came here at the link and put a beating on us like that, that was that was poor coaching by Nick Sirianni. So th- he on a short leash. He's definitely on a short leash. You got to get it right. But I like the Eagles to win the NFC championship. And I also see the Eagles at least making it to the NFC championship. I'm saying that right now, barring any injuries or setback, the Eagles will make it back to the NFC championship. I'm rocking with that. I cannot off the top of my head right now, think of another roster in the NFC that I think holds a candle. These guys, I want to take a quick moment. Shout out Mr. Ryan Flournoy wide receiver picked out of Southeastern Missouri by the Cowboys. Shout out Ryan. Good friend of mine's cousin. I think he's going to do some big things Okay, in Dallas. Shout out Thomas Moore, you know, friend of the program, always following Cowboys. The Cowboys, I think, have got maybe a puncher's chance. I think that this is a a critical year, of course, for Dak and McCarthy down there. There's rumors out there saying that Michael Parson has divided the locker room. You got to have Dak Prescott locker room. And you got to have Michael Parsons. Now, I don't know how true these reports are, but the guy that reported, he always have Jerry Jones on his Dallas morning shows and stuff like that after Sunday football. So if he's reporting that, then it got to be really a thing going on. So with all the turmoil, you got Dak Prescott with the lingering thought in the back of his mind, will I get paid again? Will I get comped out? Will they cash me out and make me the highest paid quarterback? Because he will be the highest paid quarterback in the league if he get it from Dallas. We going to see. It's a lot of questions that need to be answered, but they had a quiet free agency. They had a quiet NFL draft. You know, they didn't have too much wiggle room, but they did get some offensive line talent because they had a lot of departing pieces from their offensive line. But I don't think that the Dallas Cowboys will be able to deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. And watch out for the Washington Commanders getting Jaden Daniels. And and, and he's an electric quarterback. He's going to give people in Washington those RG3 vibes before Mike Shanahan killed his career. Yeah, I promise you that. So watch out for that. Watch out for the Commanders. They're going to be tough, man. Commanders have got playmakers. Scary Terry uh, is a is a true number one receiver. And uh, Jaden Daniels, I mean, you know, he's a biscuit above 200 pounds, but this guy runs a 4-3 legit. He's going to be an exciting quarterback. Like I said, this is going to be the most exciting co- football that Washington has seen since that first RG3 year when he went crazy that rookie year. Expect Agreed. that this year. These guys are going to be tough to deal with. There ain't going to be no easy games. I see the Giants also taking a step up. Malik Neighbors is going to be exactly what New York was missing since Odell Beckham left. And how ironic. He's an LSU guy, just like uh, Odell Beckham was. And he's a skilled receiver, very fast. He got a great set of hands. This is exactly what Daniel Jones has been missing from that offense and leaving Saquon Barkley to carry these bums on his back for years. So, Look, man, this is going to be some exciting football for the for for everybody in the NFC. In my opinion, it's going to be some very very competitive games from top to bottom. I can't wait to get into football. Obviously, football season's uh, you know something a lot of people look forward to. Massive pressure on Daniel Jones to you know hold up his end of the deal with that mm-hmm. big contract that he recently signed. I mean, if you ask me, the Giants management is. Looking at this is a prove it year for Daniel Jones. Yes. They weren't ready to pass up a playmaker like Malik Neighbors. I in fact, when I when they took that pick, I almost was kind of saying to myself, they're picking neighbors 
for the next quarterback that they get in that huddle. Absolutely, because Daniel Jones, it, it, this is it. This is it. Hit or miss. Daniel Jones is a jabroni. The New York Giants made a mistake giving him the money and not Saquon Barkley. And all y'all did was make Saquon Barkley mad. It's almost similar than when Craig hit Debo with the brick. You know what I mean? All you did was make him mad. So, look, man, we're we going to see some, some, some guys step up, you know what I mean, key positions. Like I said, the Giants haven't had a big-time playmaker at wide receiver for years since Odell Beckham before those injuries creeped up and they tried to send him to Cleveland to destroy his career. But, man, it's going to be some exciting football in the NFC East. I'm looking forward to it. But the Eagles – Will reign supreme. You could bet you can put the house on that. I'm betting dollars to donuts on that on that one as well. Prognosticated here. You heard it here first from the West Philly hippie. Okay, we're gonna move into the next phase of the program. NBA playoffs, a lot going on. Uh, let's start out talking about uh my favorite team, the Boston Celtics, just lost Chris Tapp's Porzingis. Does not bode well for them, even though they had, I believe, a 21 and 4 record. Without him this past season, they're a much different squad with him on the court than without. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. You know, I saw Jason Tatum step on Bam foot too. Hopefully he okay. You know what I mean? He he looked like he was all right. But Chris Stapps being missed, that's going to hurt the Celtics. And everything now is going to be dependent on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. We've seen this, this show. They did make the finals with those two, but – they also lost last year in the Eastern Conference Final. What will they do now that the third option is gone? So who will step up? Will it be Derek White, who has been balling? He has been balling out for the Boston Celtics. Will it be Drew Holiday? Will he step up his level of play? He's been a stout defender since the he, he landed in Boston. So they still have a top four, but missing a piece like Chris Stapps, Porzingis, who I feel is one of the softest guys in the league. Ginger legs, ginger knees. He easily can get injured, and, and it's just an unfortunate situation. But y'all, the Boston Celtics is going to have to. They're going to have to just dig deep. They got to strap on their boots, man. They're going to have to put their boots on it and get busy. So we'll see. We'll see. Boston should win. They should make it to the Eastern Final at least. And I'm with, I'm with that as well. And then as to the West, we're gonna get into LeBron James. We're going to get into all the intrigue surrounding his movement. But, you know, uh, as we said in the last program, you got to love what Anthony Edwards and Minnesota is doing. Um, Kevin, Kevin Durant obviously gave Ant, um, I would say a, a, a true blessing or, or welcoming into that elite of the elite of the new uh, NBA community. I know that you put Brunson into that group. I would probably put after this playoffs, Anthony Edwards in there as well. How do you feel about Anthony that? Anthony Edwards is remarkable. He makes basketball so much enjoyable to watch. Everybody look for it's like it's like almost I didn't get to see 1988, 89, Mike. I saw 91 and up Michael Jordan, but Mike in the 80s, man, before the range when he was chasing that first one, that had to be a thing to see. He was a man on a mission. And he tried to carry a franchise on their back before Pippen was developed. And all of those guys became champions. But with Anthony Edwards, he's young, 22 years old. He already he already has the killer mindset. He's an animal. He's willing to drop the knife in his opponent's heart. I love that. He don't bite his tongue. He talks his shit. I love that. And like I said, people... When LeBron, who has influenced the generation of basketball players and the KDs and all these guys, the friendly era of basketball, once they're out the way, Anthony Edwards will be the new influencer for the generation behind him, creating a bunch of monsters again. Because Ant, Ant, Ant Man is 40 points, dropping 40 on game four elimination game on the. Phoenix Suns, who a lot of people pick to at least make the Western Conference Finals, made Bradley Beal look silly, made Devin Booker look silly, even was going at Kevin Durant, and it was absolutely nothing he could do. That's why I say Anthony Edwards is cut from the Michael Jordan cloth. Absolutely. The only difference between him and Mike, Ant-Man might have a, a, a better team at this stage of his career because you got an established 
rim protector and Rudy Gobert, one of the best defensive centers. I still feel like he's a jabroni. But he is what he is, one of the best defensive centers. In the NBA, you got Carl Anthony Towns as your number two, as your Robin. To go along with McDaniels, one of the best defenders in the league and a guy that can get a bucket. He can be depended on to get a bucket. And Mike Conley, can we agree, Mike Conley been solid since he was in high school, giving the rock up to Greg Oden consistently every year, give you good numbers. He's a great point guard. This team can go far, and I promise you the best matchup in the semifinal will be that Denver-Minnesota matchup. So many matchups from top to bottom. This is going to be a Game 7 series. Jamal Murray and Jokic versus Cat and, and, and Ant-Man. This is going to be a crazy series. I can't wait to see it. And it starts Saturday. Let's go, man. I'm hyped for that series as well. And that's a perfect segue into the prediction phase of the program here. So before we tapped in, you and I were talking about LeBron James, right? And we've, we've done this a bunch of times. You know, where's LeBron going? Is LeBron happy? What's up with Bronny? You know, the whole situation. And now you got Brunson uh, top ticking it. New York Knicks record in the playoffs, 47 points. I think he almost had a... 47 and 10, man. He the first Knicks player to have a 40 and 10 assist game in Knicks history. And he broke the record for... Most points scored by a Nick in playoff history. Ah. So it's like you said, LeBron is up post-game conference, dressed all in black, giving the media members next to nothing, right? But he does have, as you called out, somewhat of a tell in terms of the look on his face. What did that look remind you of? People, remember after that 2010 NBA, uh, NBA semifinal loss to the Boston Celtics between – the Cleveland Cavaliers. Remember when LeBron took that jersey off as he walked in the tunnel? And that's the same look he had last night. Like, I'm ready to get the hell out of here. And the sad part is, Darvin Ham will be fired. He's going to lose his job. The D'Angelo Russell, I mean, I don't know why y'all even gave him his money. He's a jabroni. I've been calling that. D'Angelo Russell ain't shit. Rui Hachimura had a good year last year and a contract year fizzled right out. It's just like having a soda in the refrigerator and you're not closing the top all the way. By the time you get it, it ain't got no more zing to it. That's exactly what those jabronis are. Them guys, they start off hot and they finish on bullshit. So LeBron is ready to leave. It's going to be the New York Knicks or the Warriors now. I can see a scenario where one of those guys take a pay cut and Draymond get on the phone with his clutch sport homie and talk to LeBron. Come on, Brian. These guys say you ain't going to get a fifth ring. You behind Kobe. You behind Duncan. We could get you a fifth ring. It's almost like the same pitch Draymond gave to Kevin Durant after he beat the OKC Thunder with the help of the Splash Brothers. Being up 3-1, OKC did, and then they lost three straight. It's going to be the same type of recruitment. I see LeBron leaving the Los Angeles Lakers, and now the real Laker fans could disband themselves from the LeBron fan base. It, it, it's a great divorce. Divorce is good sometimes, man. Yeah, well, look, it's like you said. When you think about the Lakers, you're thinking about Kareem, Magic, Jerry West, Shaq and Kobe. And, 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 you know, LeBron has always been on that mercenary level, which he loves being on that level, right? And so for me, when I think about the sort of bigger picture, the legacy of his career and whatnot, I mean, I, I think it's just as meaningful to his legacy as getting that next ring as it would be to, to really tack together a couple special seasons inside Madison Square Garden. It, it it would be like like I said, the Knicks are relevant again. It's like the nineteen nineties is back. That that type of love and affinity that the New York Knicks uh used to get in the nineties from from the Patrick Ewing and Pat Riley led Knicks teams. And now, you know, James Dolan has been a, a real piece of shit for years for that Knicks franchise, but they he finally allowed basketball people to handle the decisions instead of him. He was the Jerry Jones 
of basketball. And that proves when the owner take a step back and play the owner role instead of handling basketball business, your franchise can flourish. And they finally let Leon Rose handle the duty of finding the talent. They brought the Villanova guys in. You got Jalen Brunson, an emerging talent. And I like to call the big dog yard of all the NBA elites. Think of any one of them. Jalen Brunson is in the yard with all of them. I'm not saying he's better, but I'm just saying he is in the yard with those guys. And LeBron, that's an attractive de destination to go play. For. And you don't have to kill him by taking too much money because you already banked a lot of money. At this stage of the game, I think it's more about legacy and adding hardware to the man. So if he's smart, he's going to either go to Golden State or the Knicks. But I guarantee you, he ain't staying in Los Angeles. That ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. And we're going to, if we can, pick one. I'm going with, like I said, man, it's going to be hard to tell Stephen Curry and Draymond no. And then Clay's a free agent. Look, Stephen Curry and Draymond still have leverage within the franchise. They will listen to these players and what their 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 assessment is. If they can bring back Clay Thompson at a reasonable deal, you will see LeBron James in a Golden State Warriors uniform. That will happen. And all hell will break loose next year if that happens. Because John Morant will return. They're going to be back. A lot of those injured Memphis Grizzly players, they will be back. They're going to play with a chip on their shoulder. You got Kevin Durant. Will he pry his way out of another team? and try to form another uh, uh, three-headed monster somewhere else, we don't know. Denver going to be around. Dallas going to be around. There will be a lot of teams. Minnesota is emerging as a perennial power in the Western Conference. But I'm telling you, it will come down to Stephen Curry and Draymond and those guys making that call to LeBron. And LeBron is the type of guy he can't say no to his friends. He will be a Golden State Warrior when it's all said and done. <laughs> And you know what, Andre, I got to say, I like that. I want to see that, right? I do want to see LeBron team up with Steph, Draymond, the Splash Bro. I mean, I don't even know if Chris Paul is going to stick around. Maybe he sticks around. Who knows? Oh, he'll stick around. That's one of his childhood friends, too. He'll stick around because he deserve a ring, and they're going to try to get Chris Paul his. That's going to that's gonna be ugly, people. LeBron on, on the Warriors, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, it's not going to be fair, but that might happen. I think that's going to happen. I like that prediction. Stamp it, lock it in, because the, Mr. West Philly Hippie on this program is known to prognosticate the future, as we've well documented plenty of times. Andre, as always, thank you for tapping in. Thank you for the education, and we'll do it again next week. All right, we'll do it again next week, man. All right, I'll talk to you then, man.